Kanye, Botswana, in southern Africa, is in many ways typical of African towns today. The traditional and the modern are married in people's day-to-day -day lives. Sorghum is the preferred traditional cereal of people in Botswana. Cooked as porridge, it is eaten alone or with meat or other dishes at almost every meal. Making sorghum foods takes a great deal of time and effort. The bran, or tough outer hull of the sorghum grain, must be removed by soaking and pounding. It contains substances that make it bitter tasting and hard to digest. The bran also gives the flour a color that is unacceptable to consumers. The moist sorghum is put into a mortar and pounded to remove the hull. After pounding, the grain is winnowed to separate the kernels from the bran. This process of pounding and winnowing is repeated until enough of the bran has been removed. The sorghum kernels are then made into flour meal. It takes an hour to process a kilogram of sorghum in the traditional way. A portion of the grain is lost during processing. The flour stays moist and may spoil, so smaller quantities must be prepared often and quickly used. The reward for all this labor is very small. Today, women are less willing to process food at home. More and more time is spent in other productive jobs that contribute to family income. More and more children are going to school. Time spent traveling to and from school and on school work means there is less time for household chores. All this has led to a consumer trend away from sorghum in favor of maize or cornmeal that has already been processed. It is much more convenient simply to buy the ready-to-use meal. Botswana would get more benefit from processing its own grains. Consumers would get their preferred food. Local farmers would have a good market for their crops. And the country would be less dependent on foreign agriculture for its food supplies. Sorghum is well suited to the dry land conditions in much of Africa. New, high-yielding varieties can boost harvests. However, new technology is needed to process all this grain. As part of an overall strategy to secure food supplies and a measure of self-sufficiency in agriculture, the government of Botswana asked the Botswana Agricultural Marketing Board to investigate the possibility of producing and marketing a domestic sorghum meal. In 1976, the International Development Research Center of Canada joined with the marketing board to set up a pilot sorghum mill at the Pizzani grain depot in the southern part of the country. The mill was an immediate success, processing sorghum and other grains in a continuous commercial scale operation. The key element in this successful milling operation was an innovative mechanical dehuller. A simple device, the dehuller does the job of traditional processing at a modern rate. The National Research Council in Saskatoon, Canada, developed the dehuller, bringing together elements of other machines commonly used in grain processing in Canada. Rather than pounding, this machine removes the hulls from the grain by rubbing them off against an abrasive surface. The suitability of this process was tested with different sorghum varieties and a prototype with the best features was built for testing in a number of African countries. With the help of a Canadian team, the dehuller was put to work in Botswana. 
it matched the output of standard milling equipment. The product of this industrial milling is bagged and distributed mainly through merchants in the capital city, Haberone. This rail carload of 18 tons is already sold before it reaches the city. Consumer demand is strong and steady. But what about consumers in rural areas, out of reach of railways or city shops? How can the benefits of this new technology reach them? In the search for an answer to these concerns, the Rural Industries Innovation Center in Kanye is trying a smaller scale version of the Pizzani mill. This system handles smaller quantities of grain and is closer to both producers and consumers in rural areas. The key again is the dehuller scaled down and with several new design features. This new dehauler was manufactured locally using skills and materials that were readily available. Ordinary grinding stones of the sort used to sharpen tools are again the main feature of the Botswana dehuller. They are placed on an axle in a barrel shaped container where they turn at high speed during the operation. This assembly is placed on a base with a chute. A lever is connected to a unique dumping device that allows all the grain to be recovered. A fan assembly winnows the bran hulls from the grain kernels. The hopper holds about 10 kilograms of grain, approximately the same volume as the barrel. Final assembly involves connection to a cyclone that collects the bran drawn off by the fan. The entire system is powered by a small diesel engine. This smaller setup has great flexibility. It can run continuously processing large quantities of grain like the established commercial mill. It can also handle smaller quantities of grain for individuals in separate batches. The operation is simple. When the grain first enters the dehuller barrel, it is retained for a brief period before the exit chute is opened. The grain is kept in the barrel just long enough to remove the desired amount of bran. The entry and exit rates are regulated so that each grain spends the correct length of time being dehulled. Too long a retention breaks the kernels. Too short a time leaves bran on the kernels. The local modifications made to the dehuller for this type of service in Botswana have actually increased the machine's efficiency. It was found to be more efficient than the original Canadian model and may eventually replace the dehuller at the larger mill. Inside the operating dehuller, the grain passes over the stones as they whirl around at about 2,000 revolutions per minute. Abrasion against the stones and other grains removes the hull. The colored bran is completely removed and the white dehulled sorghum emerges ready to be made into flour. The dehuller works just as well on other grains, such as maize, that vary in size, shape, and milling characteristics. This milling system has also been used to process cow peas, millets, and pigeon peas. Like the mill at Pizzani, the small-scale mill in Kanye was a success. The technology was sound, and the need it served real. The program of scientific testing intended for the dehuller sometimes had to be put off while customers lined up to be served. <laughs> Wow. 
bana mo go le botoka thata gona le garona ka hore ga rona go no go diega a re ha o tsentse go apa bo tsana go etelisi wa te e ya no mo go botoka thata ka hore go silwa kana go bo o se we go apa go thuga kana go botse we go apa e le ya lo mo ma botleneng a bo kwa ja rona re bona ba iri re tse thata go le gonntle le mo ba neng ba dikwele ka ga sa tshwarela re ne le bana ba di ba nna ra mo dikwele Transportation is one of the biggest problems for mill users. Sometimes it doubled the cost of processing the grain to carry it to the mill. And so a transport service was arranged as a convenience to consumers. Today, Mrs. Masisi has rented the cart to bring 20 kilos of sorghum for milling. The grain is weighed and the milling price is paid. Charges are the equivalent of three US cents per kilo. Payment can be made in cash or in grain or bran. This service milling is preferred by many people because they get their own grain back. It is not mixed with others. Rural families have kept seed and grown their own sorghum for generations and often will not accept flour meal of a different quality. When operating on a batch basis, there is nothing to push the last of the grain through the dehuller. Some grain remains inside the dehuller, but can be recovered simply by opening the trap door at the bottom of the barrel. The dehulled sorghum kernels are put through a conventional hammer mill and reduced to flour meal. The flour from the hammer mill and the brand from the dehuller are drawn off separately by fans into two cyclones. Users bring their own bags to reduce costs. The flour is ready for cooking. It can be stored without spoiling because the sorghum was not soaked before milling. The bran can be used for animal feed or sold for brewing beer. For Mrs. Masisi, a half day's work has been done in just a few minutes. This simple technology has an importance to the well-being of people that goes beyond just better flour milling. The effects are multiplied throughout the whole food system in developing countries like Botswana. Meal preparation is easier, so that people have more time for other productive activities. Increased consumer demand leads to better markets for farmers and more stable food production. It is a movement toward meeting basic human needs and improving the quality of life. A contribution to development. <laughs>